On January 20th, 2017, the next President of the United States will walk into the White House. If, heaven forbid, that next President is a Republican, I think it's pretty clear we know what will happen. A lot of the rights that have been won over years, from women's rights to voter rights to gay rights to worker rights, will be at risk. Social Security, which Republicans call a Ponzi scheme, may face privatization. Our vets may see the VA hospital that needs to be improved and made better for them turned over to privatization. Planned Parenthood will be defunded. The list goes on because the differences are so stark. You know, everybody says every election is important, and there's truth to that. This is a watershed election. I know how important it is that we have a Democrat succeed President Obama in the White House. And I will do all that I can in this campaign to reach out and explain what I stand for and what I will do as president. You know, I became a grandmother 15 months ago, and so I spent a lot of time thinking about my granddaughter's future. But as president, I will spend even more time thinking about the futures of all the kids and the grandchildren in this country because I want to make sure every single child has a chance to live up to his or her God-given potential. If you will join me in this campaign, we will make that a mission. Thank you, good night, and may the force be with you. Thank you to the candidates tonight. Thank you to the audience here in New Hampshire, here at St. Anselm. And thank you to the audience at home. We wish everyone at home a happy and safe holiday week ahead, and we wish all of you, the candidates, a happy and safe holiday with your families. George and the powerhouse political team standing by with analysis. George, over to you. Have thank a great you, night. David. <laughs> the force was with us, we hope, tonight. Thank you for that. Thanks for that great debate. And Matthew Dodd, I want to go to you first. The debate began with an apology from Bernie Sanders. It ended with agreement across the stage. Did it change anything? No, I, I don't think it changed the dominance of this race and the structure of this race. She comes in, Hillary Clinton came into this night with a big lead. She's going to go out of this night with a big lead. The thing, the fascinating thing to me about this debate is every one of the folks on that stage had their best night that they've had in this year. Hillary <laughs> Clinton had, her, had his best night. I think Martin O'Malley had his best night. I think Hillary Clinton had her best night. And I think Bernie Sanders had his best night. And when that's the case, she walks out of here with a 28, 25 right. point lead. And I thought with Bernie Sanders, especially on national security, you know, in the previous debates, it seemed like he didn't even really want to get into it. He was much more focused on, on that issue. He went after Hillary and drew a line between her positions on the Iraq war back when she was in the Senate, her positions on Libya when she was Secretary of State, and what she wants to do now in Syria. Right. And he said he was much less a fan of a regime change uh, than she is. But again, she tried to stick to her position, saying it's a false choice to choose between the two fighting ISIS, keeping Assad. Clearly with an eye towards the general election. She was clearly, you know, focusing. To, I mean, she defended her record there, but she also wanted to make the point that she's tough on foreign policy. That may not play all that well in a Democratic primary, but she wants to make that case in a general election. And Donna Brazil, in fact, Secretary Clinton, did pull a little bit of a Bernie Sanders on that issue of the data breach, accepted his apology. She's accepted his apology. He apologized to his supporter. But you know what? Secretary Clinton was able to not just talk to Bernie Sanders on the issues like he's strong on the economy, uh, Martin O'Malley, but you know what? She took on Donald Trump. And Democrats, that's what we're ready for. We're ready to take on the Republicans. And she proved tonight that she's ready and of course, the other now, two I, as well. I, I should say that Donald Trump just tweeted me uh, and said <laughs> that I was stupid to believe that she wants to take on Donald Trump, that that is just what she says. You think she really does? Uh, not only is Secretary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and Martin O'Malley, Donald Trump needs to understand that we Democrats, we're not going to cower like the Republicans when it comes <laughs> to his bellicose rhetoric. We have a vision, and we know how to fight, too. It is striking, Cokie Roberts, that his name was the only candidate's right. name that came up throughout the entire 90-plus minutes of this debate. Well, I think it is true that they like to run against him, but it's also true that they want to make the point that, they, that Donna just made, that they're tough and that the Republicans are cowering uh, 
in his shadow. That's been less true of late, particularly Governor Bush, but that was that has been the case up until now. But you know, George, one of the things that, that Mrs. Clinton did tonight, uh, which was not planned, obviously that last thing of <laughs> may the force be with you was planned, and it was clever. But when she was asked, uh, should Wall Street love you? And she said, well, every, everyone no, to love everybody me. should love me. That was a very key moment. Key difference was, with Bernie Sanders. But I want to get to Matthew right away. What do the Republicans do with this debate? Anything they see bother them tonight? Well, I think on the Trump thing, whether they were intentional about it or not, I think Donald Trump in the Republican primary gains from this night. He actually is going to be better off because they attacked him in this, because what his voters and other Republicans are going to think is the only character is Donald Trump.